So welcome everybody, my name is Mark Denson. I am a uh, Tampa Bay search engine optimization speaker, author, and consultant. And as a Tampa Bay search engine optimization speaker, author, and consultant, I speak, write, and consult on the topic of Tampa Bay search engine optimization. <laughs> <laughs> so now, if you don't know what Tampa Bay search engine optimization is, Tampa Bay search engine optimization is the art of altering your website in such a way to appease search engines in order to rank first on Google, Yahoo, Bing, and other search engines. I've been a Tampa Bay search engine optimization speaker, author, and consultant for approximately 13 years, which just by my definition makes me the best uh, Tampa Bay search engine optimization <laughs> <laughs> author and consultant that there is and requires no further proof. Yeah. So whether you are looking for a Tampa Bay search engine optimization speaker, author, and consultant, or you're not looking for a Tampa Bay search engine optimization speaker, author, and consultant, I highly uh, request that you hire me and as your Tampa Bay search engine optimization <laughs> speaker, author, and consultant. Thank you. <laughs> That's so. a key word. <laughs> So now, if you've ever been to a, to a traditional SEO seminar, uh, read a traditional SEO blog, um, read a traditional SEO book, hired a traditional SEO company, there's a good chance that your homepage sounds something similar to that, but within your industry. And there's a good reason for it, um, because it works, sort of. Um, it works sort of because if our goal is to get ranked uh, on the top page of Google, there's a good chance if you use a keyword enough times in your text and you try to make it relevant and you, you and, and um, uh, you know you build a couple links that you're going to get ranked on that first page. But my challenge is: is that really our goal, or is that the result of our goal? See, when we all started our business, or you started doing whatever it is that you're doing, got your job, went to school, whatever whatever brought you here, I can't imagine it's because you thought that this was the place where you were going to get number one on Google. Um, you, you started your business because you're passionate about something. You had an answer to somebody. You had a solution that other people could use. That you know you had you know, and, and there's enough people out there that could use that solution. That uh, you could actually make a living at it. Possibly you know have a very successful company over it. So uh, so that's where where you started. And then somehow it went wrong. Somebody told you that hey look if you you know if you write this awful text and you put a bunch of links in you you know and you try all these different weird techniques. Um, you'll be number one on Google, and then, and then life will be uh, great, and you can, you know, uh, sing, uh, you know, in the shower, and all sorts of weird, creepy things. But, um, uh, but the fact is that SEO does not stop with getting number one on Google. That is not enough anymore. Um, we talked about being different. Like, SEO is that's just where it starts. Getting number one on Google is not hard. It's getting number one on Google and uh, enticing that person to want to click on that link, and then when they get to your site. Um, building credibility with them, not selling them, but building credibility, building a connection, building a human connection with another person on the other end of that computer. And then having them uh, want to you know, go further through your site and then eventually contact you. SEO is this process from, uh, hey, I have a problem to I think you're the right solution for me. Not, hey, I have a problem and now you happen to be number one on Google. So, um, so when we look at traditional search engine optimization, the traditional search engine optimization goal, uh, as, as I've defined it at least, is to trick Google into thinking that you're more important and relevant than you are in order to rank on page one in an effort to increase your traffic. So that's that's the goal of SEO. I mean, we can all agree with that. You know, we're we're we're, uh, um, we're going to do stuff like we're going to you know create relevant content by using keywords. We're going to do some link building. We're going to um, you know to, uh, like. You know, do all these different techniques in order to, to have Google think that we're more important, we're more relevant, more authoritative, and then we're going to rank. And then, hopefully, are we going to say that, like, look, our traffic went up 30, 40 percent uh, in the past month, past couple weeks, whatever it is. And uh, you know, and that's and that's helpful. But what does that really mean? What if the phone's not ringing? I can raise your traffic a thousand percent, but if the phone's not ringing, it doesn't mean anything. So, this is how we do it with with again with traditional search engine optimization. Uh, SEO is about numbers. We're about, um, you know, we, we turn everything into a number. Everything is a conversion rate. It's uh, bounce rates, it's uh, percentages, it's numbers, it's hits, uh, it, you know, um, uh, time on site, page views. They're all numbers. We even turn things that should not be numbers into numbers, like engagement. Um, we have an ROI on social media, which, which me personally, I think is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like asking you, what's the, what's the ROI on the relationship with your wife? <laughs> um, that don't, don't ever ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, 
it doesn't go well. Um, because uh, social media is about engagement, it's about building relationships, and it's about building connection. And so, so, um, so, but we turn that into numbers, we turn everything into numbers. And I don't know about you, but I don't like being a number. When I get to a website and I feel like I'm being treated as though, as I'm a, st a statistic, that I'm being pushed into a certain direction where I, I'm not building a connection, I'm being sold. I don't want to buy. And so whether I need your product or service or not, I'll find somebody that I'll, how, uh, that I can have more of a connection with, that I understand better, that, that, that cares about me, or at least, at least the perception that they care about me. So here's how we do it. We do keyword research. And this is our number one thing. We, we, you know, our goal with keyword research is to find the most competitive, uh, the, the, the most uh, traffic keywords that are the least competitive. So what keywords get a lot of traffic but have a little competition? So, uh, and, and which is, you know, uh, makes sense. The problem is that we're not considering who we're searching these words. Um, if we're a landscaper and you know one of the, and we when we get ranked for the word accountant, it's not a good match. We're not we're not building a connect. You know, we're not. Uh, it's not a relevant keyword, but it's a very you know competitive keyword, and so we're we're going to rank for it. Um, we write SEO friendly text. That's uh, another word for um, how we open this thing. Uh, not the little glitchy part, but the the part about the the um, uh, you know cramming keywords into your text. Relevant SEO friendly text is a formula that says, uh, you know, 4.2% of your words or whatever have to be, and don't write that down because I don't know that's not a <laughs> but, uh, but have to be a certain keyword, and that's how we're going to make your text relevant. Okay. Uh, then we pitch and sell. So, so our main purpose on our website is to sell you something. So you get to our website, we talk about how great we are, we try to sell you on how great our products are. Uh, we show off our product, and we use testimonial. We'll use all these different methods to try to sell you something. It's all about the sales and try to get you to take action. And then we build links. And now the, 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 uh, the idea behind build, building links is it builds your authority. So what we do is uh, we'll, we'll farm out somebody to build some links for us. And this tells Google that if you have all these other sites, uh, pointing to you as an expert, the idea is that you're the expert. If you have, you know, here's a look, I have 10,000 other sites pointing to my site, then I must be, you know, I must be something special because everybody's pointing to me. <laughs> the problem with that is that, like anything in life, you are the equivalent of the people that you hang out with most. So if you hang out with a bunch of losers, you know, you're not the black sheep in the group, you're, you're a loser. Um, it's just, that's just the way uh, the internet works in, in this case too. So what happens is you have um, uh, the, the easy way to get links are to get links from uh, websites that are, are you know like bad directories, stuff overseas, uh, just you know sites that aren't active, sites that aren't good. And uh, what ends up happening was there you, you're, you have 10,000 links on a spammy site, and then guess what you you're seeing as Google will see you as a spammy site. It'll see, it'll, you know it'll it'll uh, uh, make that that connection that you're being linked from, uh, linked from all these bad sites. So, so this is how uh, we accomplish uh, SEO. It's, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's this constant struggle to find the hole in the boat, find the easiest way to get around to uh, uh, trick the system. And what I want to challenge everybody with today is a more unconventional, uh, what should be a more conventional approach, but is more unconventional because it's not about tricking the system. And it's, it's something that, <laughs> Don't hit anybody with that. Though. We have key lime pie waiting for you. <laughs> you have no idea what we're talking about. Um, so, so this is our traditional SEO approach, and uh, and and it, and it does work to some degree. The problem with it is that it only works sometimes. So, what we'll do is we'll go through all this, you know, all these great lengths, and then uh, we'll get ranked number one on Google, yay! And uh, look at that, our traffic has increased, yay! And then all of a sudden, Google has an update, like Hummingbird, which came out uh, about a month and a half ago. And now, all of a sudden, you lose 30% of your traffic, 40% of your traffic. Uh, Google Penguin and Panda came out you know, last year, year and year, you know, years before, and people were losing 60, 70, 80% of their traffic. They were getting penalized because they were finding these, uh, they, were, they were taking the short way, they were taking the back door uh, to get this ranking. And so you're in a constant state of, uh-oh, Google changed, now I need to change. Now I figure out what the next hole uh, is and figure out how to trick the system in the next way. And so, so what I want to challenge everybody with today is another way to look at it where it's, it's less about tricking the system and more about what I call uh, search engine humanization. 
and um, it's to be more important and relevant to the right people, and you live on page one of Google every time it matters. And there's a couple of um, keys here. It's uh, to be more important. We're not talking about tricking Google into thinking we're more important. We're actually about me being more important, being a valuable resource in this community, in this community called the internet. Uh, to the right people, we are not in the spaghetti throwing business. We're not about throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping something sticks. And then, you know, hey look, I got a thousand hits on my website and uh, 980 of them were completely useless because I'm a local landscaper and they came from India, mm -hmm. you know, or they came from the UK, or they came from uh, Washington State and I'm in New Jersey. Um, this is useless traffic. This is, this is like warm, fuzzy traffic. It's supposed to make you feel better as though you're, you're increasing, but it's not legitimate traffic. Um, we've had clients of ours, and hold your ears, don't listen to this, because this might stress you out. Um, <laughs> we've had clients of ours where we've reduced their traffic. Like our work has actually gotten them 60% less traffic uh, because, you know, over, over the months, now, because of what we've done. But their uh, form submissions, their conversions, their, their um, quality clients were up 800%. So, you know, we got rid of all the garbage traffic. We were, we were targeting the right traffic. So this isn't about, um, you know, traffic. This is about getting the right traffic. There's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And then every time it matters. Uh, and by that, it's, it's um, you know, in, in the sales process, we think of uh, somebody wants to buy something, so let me sell it to them. But there's a whole, when, when you're talking about Google and, and search, there's a whole other uh, uh, step one before that that we all forget. And that step is, um, is research. If we have a problem, we don't just go, all right, let me buy something to fix this. We first start researching it. And so if we could be a resource to that person that's researching when they are ready to buy something, they, um, they look to you as their, as, their, uh, as their expert. So let's talk about how we do it in comparison to traditional SEO. So uh, in, in our first step of SEO, we're focused on numbers. In search engine humanization, we're focused on human beings. Big difference. Um, we're we're uh, building a connection with other human beings. And this is really important because, uh, as you're going to see, uh, building a connection online is something that very, very few people out there are doing now. Um, we've, we've pretty much sucked the human being out of everything <coughs> that happens online. Social media, um, search, our websites, it's just devoid, it's just void of all human emotion, all human being. So if you're the person out there that's, that's being human, that's, that's uh, connecting with people uh, on a much more personal level, you're going to be the guy wearing uh, tights and a cape. At the <laughs> you're going to stand out because people are going to feel instantly connected to you. Um, instead of keyword research, we're going to do people research. I don't really care what keywords uh, you know you rank for. I mean, we a lot of times we run keyword re you know research reports, and you know because um, it, it shows us uh, it, it shows how we're how we're um, progressing. Uh, but it's not really what I'm as concerned about. I want to I want to find out who's, you know, who's got this problem and who's looking for it. I want to figure out who those people are. We answer questions. Um, Google is, our, is, is uh, the smartest friend that we all have. And so when we're searching something on Google, we are asking a question every single time. Um, if you're looking for a plumber, you, you know, I need, you know, who's the best plumber in my area? You're, you're asking questions. Uh, more often than not, 99% of the sites out there are not answering those questions. So then you have something like Wikipedia or uh, other resources out there answering those questions for people because businesses are just not answering those questions. They're busy. They're, they're too busy trying to sell. So we want to answer questions. We don't want to pitch. We want to add value. Um, you know, we don't want to be that company that or that website that's constantly trying to sell you some pitch, pitch, pitch. Instead, it's to um, you know just forever add value, give as much value as you possibly can, give more value to your visitors than they could possibly uh, uh, stomach. And it puts you in a whole other league. And, and well, we're going we're gonna to go through we're going to go through each one, uh, and then we want to share our content. So so now um, when we talk about link building and, and having that authority of other people pointing to your site as uh, um, as being important, that's a really important factor. But when you're faking that by hiring someone uh, to do this, you have to build ten thousand links because you went on Fiverr and spent five or ten dollars on link building, you know whatever it is. Um, that's the that's kind of the the uh, trick way of doing it. But the real way, what what Google really intends, is for other people to share, other people to say, hey, this is a really valuable article. This is a really valuable tool. This is an important site. This you know, these guys have something to say, and they share it. They share it on Facebook. They share it on Twitter. They share it on Pinterest. 
um, LinkedIn, they leave comments, they write blog posts about, about and they point to you as their resource. These are the kind of link building, uh, this is the kind of link building that we want to do. And, we're, and the best part about it is that we're not really doing anything. If we're creating such value online, people are going to grab it and run with it. And they're gonna, you know, we're going to have all these little soldiers out there for free that are sharing our stuff, that are spreading our message, that are, that are saying, hey, check this, you know, check these guys out. Look what these guys are doing. So, uh, so this is this is a, a, a you know the night day approach as far as I'm concerned. It's a very it's a very different approach. They'll both get you there, um, you know, potentially. Uh, traditional SEO will get you there. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. It might get get you blacklisted. It might bring you back. It's it's very question it's very questionable whether it's going to work. Um, search engine humanization works every time um, because we've uh, we've been doing this for about three years. Uh, you know, just this this uh, what we're going to talk about today and. The results are, are phenomenal and they're permanent. Uh, permanent in the sense that we're not breaking any of the rules. We don't have to, a hummingbird came out and I slept like a baby. You know, I know a lot of other SEO companies or a lot of people or a lot of businesses. We got more business because of uh, a hummingbird than, than we did, um, uh, you know, every time there's there's a uh, there's an update, we do better. So so let's talk about, uh, so in other words, um, you know, all this comes down to is be the solution to your visitors' problems instead of expecting your visitors to be the solution to your problems. And this is a big problem that we have uh, with, with our website. Our, our thought process is, uh, my business is struggling, I need more clients, I need this, I, you know, it's all about our needs, this is about me, what do I need? And so um, if this is, you know, so now I project that onto my visitors. I need you to take action, I need you to buy something, I need you to fill out this form, I, you know, I'm not willing to give you anything until I get what I need first, and then I'll help you through your problem. And that's where I think there's a big uh, mistake. And so let's talk about how we're going to do all this. So, um, so moving forward. Now, this is this is a uh, um, this is a Dunkin' Donut. Now, I, I used to live in Boston uh, before I lived in New Jersey. Before I lived, uh, before I came out here, actually in the middle of New Jersey. Before I came out. So I lived in Boston, and it's one of my favorite cities in the world. And uh, this is an actual store in Boston. It's a it's a um, combination Dunkin' Donuts and fast food sushi place. Wow. <laughs> so um, I, I don't I, I hate to meet the person that gets their needs met at this uh, at this place. But but uh, the the um, you know I, like would you buy donuts from a place that shared a kitchen with rough fish, and would you buy you know sushi with a powdered dog? Like, I just, it's just very bizarre. So so um. But this is the problem, like as funny as it is, this is the problem we all have. When I started my business, uh, we started out as a web design company. We also did search engine optimization. We also <coughs> did t-shirts. We printed business cards. I did CD-ROMs. I did, um, we did, well, we did press releases. We did, uh, um, let's see, what else did we do? We did banner advertising. We did pay-per-click. We did, I mean, you name it, we, we must have had about 15, 20 different services. And it got to the point where it just diluted everything that we did, because we did too much. And so, um, you know, this is an example of, you know, uh, who are you talking to? Like, like, do you know who your ideal client is? Do you know who your target audience is? Um, a very, very good friend of mine in New Jersey has a very successful uh, catering company. And um, we went out to breakfast one morning. We, were, we would always coach each other. We do like a little mastermind thing, we'd meet at a diner. And uh, so we're sitting at this diner, and, and it was his turn. So I'm picking his brain, you know, and, and his website was horrible. And his, his uh, feeling with his website was, um, you know, he, he, uh, he, the website never worked for him. And so he, his, his reason for it, if you want to call it that, was um, my personality is too big for the internet. Oh. So, so uh, and he had a good personality, but I don't know. So, so, uh, so his personality was much too big for the internet. So, so that, was, that made him feel comfortable about his failing website. And so I started asking him questions about it. I said, well, who's your ideal client? And um, he said, anybody that's hungry. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, uh, like, okay, well, we're in a diner, and there's a lot of hungry people here, so let's go. Let's start talking to some people. I'm sure we can, you know, see if we can score a client. See if we can get people away from the diner, and let's say, you know, well, no, 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 I mean, because it's not every, you know, like, like that's not what I mean. I mean, like, like um, you know, because I, this is, these aren't my ideal clients. I'm looking for bigger parties. And, you know, we started, we started hacking away at what his ideal client was. Um, he does a lot of uh, weddings and corporate events. That was his thing. Well, you know, tell me about it. I hate doing weddings. That's you know, that's the first thing out of his mind. I hate doing weddings. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, and, and I apologize to all the women in the room. This is not me. This is his personality bigger than the internet. Mm -hmm. um, he said brides uh, were were uh, horrifying to deal with. Uh, <laughs> 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 
you know, do we have the chicken fingers? Do we not have the chicken fingers? Like it was just, it, it just was a constant nine or ten months of, you know, changing the menu on a daily basis. And so it was a lot of work for this one party. And God willing, uh, it, they weren't repeat clients because you know you hope that they're going to get married, they won't be coming back. Um, so so he uh, so this was this was a great uh, this was a terrible client for him because it was uh, a lot of work for a one time job, and that lasted a very long time. And then you know went away, and never heard from him again. Maybe they referred a friend every now and then. Uh, on the other hand, they had uh, he did a lot of corporate work. He did a lot of parties. He did a lot of Christmas parties. He did a lot of uh, meetings. He would um, he would cater lunches. Uh, they would have networking meetings in the evening, and and uh, it was always Monday through Friday. He never had to do a weekend. And he's like, I love those parties because I have one client that I do anywhere between six and ten parties a month for this one client. So I really like more of those. So okay, so let's pull up your website. The first thing that we see on your website is a bride uh, <laughs> oh. walking down the aisle. Well, yeah, I mean because I got to appease the brides. So I was like, but if you wait. Like three pictures later is a corporate boardroom. <laughs> so I was like, so what you've done now is you've now turned away the bride because the bride doesn't want to hire a corporate caterer, and you've turned away the corporation or the HR or, or the CEO because they don't want to hire a wedding uh, caterer. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of all the wedding stuff. Let's just focus on what you do best and what you want to do. And he had he had a small aneurysm, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and we tore his website up and made it just about corporate catering. Uh, and, and everything changed because now all of a sudden the pictures, the visuals were what the corporation was expecting when they got to his website. The speak, we could talk in a language that the corporation or the HR or the, uh, the CEO could understand and connect with. We didn't have this weird thing where we had to combine the two. Uh, we were able to write blogs and write content and white papers and all this information about uh, ways to throw a good, uh, you know, a good corporate party, um, you know, tips for your next, uh, for your next company outing. We can we can write content that would help HR HR uh, folks and, and CEOs uh, really run successful parties. And so we filled up this website with all this great content. And within 12 months, he doubled his business. I didn't get any of it. But he doubled his business. Um, and now he uh, he does all the TV shows in Manhattan. He's uh, the guy's all over the place. It's it's, it's amazing. He doesn't do a single wedding. He hasn't done any wedding in years. <laughs> so so this is this is um, how things change when you when you. Um, uh, you know, when you shift and you just focus on who that ideal client is. Now, with that said, we could have easily uh, created two websites, one for, you know, two, two different versions of the company, one for uh, brides and one for uh, corporations, and that would have worked just as well. But um, but that's not, but really, at the end of the day, it's not really what you wanted to. So let's talk about it. So, so now, when you're um, trying to figure out who you're talking to, uh, what the first step is to, to um, just stop trying to attract anyone that's hungry. Um, you know, stop trying to uh, appease everybody. You know, again, throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping something sticks, and trying to sell everybody, trying to fit everybody's uh, square peg into your into the round hole. Um, who is your ideal client? Who are the people that are going to make a difference within your business? Um, so, so, uh, and, and the way that we want to do this is, um, you know, if you're already in business, take a look at your clients. Who are the top 20% that make a difference? Uh, we all have, you know, uh, um, you know, certain clients that these are the ones that either bring in the most money, bring in the most referrals. They're the nicest to work with. Uh, I love doing the work that they that they want me to do. Uh, they they leave me alone and let me do what I do instead of uh, micromanaging the project. Uh, they're nice. They're whatever it is. Whatever it is. Who are the top 20% that um, you just could not live without in your company? And so that's where we start, and we figure out what do they have in common. And what do they, um, you know, what do they look like? What do they uh, sound like? Because um, we want to create very specific uh, visitor personas. And uh, the way that we do this is, um, you know, once you figure out who you're talking to and you know who your ideal clients are, who the people are that, that you connect with, who the best clients that you have are, we start writing stories about them. And so we'll sit down and we'll, uh, and, and this gets a little creepy. I'm going to warn you. Um, but we'll write a story about each client, you know, and not like, like, uh, okay, you know, uh, it's, it's a small business, you know, five to ten million uh, in New York City, and he's help with their marketing. Like, I'm not talking that. I'm talking meet Bob. You know, Bob is the CEO of us, you know, and, and telling his story. What are his fears? What is he like? What is he not like? How tall is he? I mean, whatever it takes, tell the story about creating this, this, uh, who this client is. And, and I mean, we, we've had uh, clients 
where we sat down, we've drawn pictures of people. We've, we've uh, you know, you stop photography. Well, this is what the guy would look like. And we've drawn out, uh, you know, I, I mean, an experience of who these people are. And, um, and once we did that, now all of a sudden we know what language to speak. We know what to say. <coughs> we know what they're looking for. We know what their problems are. And if I know what your problem is, I know how to solve it. And that's a, that's a key in this whole thing because uh, now I don't have to sell you on something. I'm just I'm helping you solve problems. Um, and, and if I don't know who you are, I have no way of solving your problem. So, um, so you know, figuring out who that person is that we're trying to attract is the key. And this is where we lose traffic. We lose some of the traffic that we're not really attracting, which is okay. We're fine with that because we're really driving as much quality, high quality, uh, useful traffic uh, that we can. So, anybody have any questions so far? Yeah. Where do you publish the information about your, your special visit, uh, your, your, your visitor personas? Um, just blogs? We, now we use it internally. Like, like I wouldn't make that. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that uh, out to the world. That's that's just something that, um, and it's something that we we don't. You know, like sometimes we share with clients, sometimes we don't. Sometimes you know, sometimes we don't need to. Like if it's if it's something obvious, like if it's a product that, that you know it's pretty clear who the ideal client is, then so. It really, it really depends, but but it's all internal. Like this is not something that you know. This is this is for you and your team. You know, so now everybody's focused. Everybody's you know because because um, without knowing who your target audience is, it's very difficult to speak to them, to speak their language. Uh, for example, let, let's talk about a college or a university. Um, who's the target audience of a university? Would you say? Students. Students. Yeah. Anybody else? Parents. 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 Anybody Faculty. else? Faculty. Yeah. Faculty. Okay. Anybody else? Alumni and donors. Alumni, donors. So you have all these very specific um, uh, um, types of people uh, for this, you know, for this college or this organization. Uh, is it fair to say that the parent speaks a different language than the student, mm -hmm. or the faculty speaks a different language than the alumni? Mm -hmm. um, if we're trying to, to to speak the same language to everybody, we're going to lose everybody. So what we need to do is we need to break it up in such a way where you know, this, everybody has different needs. The student is, is uh, looking at this college from a perspective of, uh, am I going to have fun? Is it a party school? Am I going to get to connect with people my own age? Am I going to, you know, am I going to fit in? They have all these concerns. The parents are are sitting there thinking, well, is this affordable? Is uh, uh, is my is my child going to have the right education? Are you going to be able to find a job after school? Everybody has different needs, and if we're just trying to fit everybody into that, you know, hey, here's our school, here's what we do, uh, but you know, as opposed to, um, you know, really understanding who each one of the each one of those people are, and then writing based on them, writing for them, concentrating on them, it's a much different experience for the person that's visiting. You know, because now if you talk about your business, you're not there to hold somebody's hand through. Like when when uh, if you run a store, or if you have a place where, where people actually walk in, somebody walks in says, hey, I'm looking for this. And you can go, oh, OK, let me help you. And you can help them, and you can walk them to what their needs are. And you can converse with them. You can tell based on uh, who they are, what they're asking, and who, how they're talking. And you can change who, you know, change how you're speaking with them. You can change where you take them. You can change how you help them. But on a website, you can't. You're not there to help them. You have to be, so you have to create a site. You have to create content. You have to create an experience that will, um, uh, that will do that for you. And so by understanding who these people are and what their needs are is uh, key to that. Because if you don't know who they are, if you don't know what they need, then you're going to have a hell of a time giving it to them. Yeah. So in that case, would you have multiple websites? Or would you have one site that's maybe slide, you know, one slider for this, one slider for that? Um, it depends on the scenario. Like for example, the, the, um, with the catering, I would have done that one, uh, um, uh, one site because it's two dramatically different audiences. But um, you know, a site like a college, I would do differently. Uh, obviously, you know, where because you have an entryway that is um, uh, very welcoming in terms of like, well, you know, welcome all, and then you can you can branch off into different areas. You have an alumni section, you have a um, uh, an academic section, you have a section, you have a student section, and within each of those sections, you if you look at a college, you'll notice that that the language is very different from one side to the other. The pictures are very different from one side to the other. Um, this is just a way that we all, uh, you know, how we all uh, connect, and, and um, uh, you know, so if you had somebody, uh, you know, if you, if you had, uh, you know, a picture of a bunch of students hanging out in the quad on, you know, for the, uh, you know, parent or the uh, alumni page, they're not going to care. They're not going to connect with that. It's not what they're looking for. 
And so you have to be very specific visually, you know, verbally uh, to, to each of those audiences. But again, you gotta know who that audience is. So let's go, uh, yep, sorry. I had a quick, quick question because I didn't see it anywhere in your slides, but um, I understand that Google is looking for more directory listings as well mm -hmm. for your business. How does that come into play in this whole? Well, we're gonna, we'll get into like, like where, where um, all that kind of stuff goes, uh, comes from, but it's, it's um, any kind of link building and directory listing you know, again, is is um, it's it's not something that you know, like 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 that's very much in the now. So so what we can do is we can go and, and register our site with a bunch of directories, man and all these other directories, and open up accounts all over the free world. Uh, there'll be inactive accounts, and you know, because we're not going to really keep up on them. Uh, and then what happens over time? Six months from now, eight months from now, twelve months from now, they have Google Platypus or whatever they're going to call the next, <laughs> the, 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 next uh, <laughs> the next update. And all, all of a sudden, they're going to find that everybody's been, you know, everybody that was doing link building or everybody that was doing article marketing and then got hammered from that, went to link building, and then got hammered from that, and then found directories, and now we got to cut that off too. And so, so the, the approach that, that we're talking about today is, is more of a long-term approach where, yeah, I mean, I, you know, definitely if you can get ranked, you know, get listed in a couple of directories, yellow pages or whatever, um, it's certainly not going to uh, hurt you, but this is a much different approach where it's about uh, creating that content, creating that value uh, that really will stand you up during any kind of update. Yeah. Your uh, SEO keyword research versus your SEH people research, mm -hmm. how are you doing the people? Uh, just like w what we talked about, like figuring out, you know, sitting down, uh, seeing who your ideal client is uh, through uh, talking to your existing client base, looking at your existing client base. Um, you know, one of the things that that, uh, that we do, we'll talk about in a second, is is uh, you know really how to uh, communicate with your clients to get to get answers out of them, uh, find out what their needs are, and uh, you know, and then look at your competitors. There's there's like, I mean. If you had to, you know who your clients are. Like you know, you know, if you've been in business, um, you know who who are the ones that bring the most value to your company. And if you're not in business, if you're just starting out, you know who you want to work with. And um, you know, and, and you know, you got to get beyond the surface of anybody with money, uh, because that's that's you know, that's where we all start. Like oh, I just want I just want to sell somebody something. I need this business to grow. I need money. You know, I need to I need to close, close, close. You get past that, and then there's there's something more where it's just I need to make a difference. I need to do this. I want to you know I want to grow my business. I want you know I want to um, um, run this thing with integrity and, and just uh, uh, and you know help people at the same time growing and helping myself. So so let's let's go on to the uh, the next uh, section. So so now we now let's assume we, we all uh, know who our you know uh, our client is. Um, now we have to figure out what exactly do they need. And uh, this is this is very um, this is very important also because we don't you know, we don't know who we're talking to. Uh, and we don't know where they need, we're in trouble. We know who we're talking to now. Now we have to find out what their needs are. And I'm not talking about their needs in terms of, I need to buy something. Um, you know, where are they? Let's, let's just assume, for example, uh, we're a roofing company, or we have a hole in our roof. So, so um, you know, get home from work and there's a leak in the roof. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is not go online and buy a roof. <laughs> uh, my first step is going to be to go online and start searching, um, you know, do you, uh, do you have to replace the roof or do you have to, um, or can you patch it? How long does the roof usually last? How many layers do you kind of tend to have on the roof before you have to replace it? Uh, how, to t how to patch a roof? You're gonna be looking for all these different answers. Um, if you're the company out there that's, that's answering those questions, uh, you're gonna now start building rapport and start, start you know, uh, building a relationship with that client because while well, everybody else is trying to sell them if you're adding value to them, before they're ready to buy something, when they are ready to buy something, you have a much different relationship than everybody else. Then, of course, you, your service has to match up and be good and everything else. But, but um, you know, it's really about finding what they need. Uh, I have a friend of mine. Uh, I wish I could say it was a client because it's such a great story. Uh, they have an appliance uh, parts company, which is about as commoditized as, as it gets in business. Uh, they sell uh, anything from the screws and bolts for your washing machine to like the little motor things or the, the you know the rubber bands and all sorts of nonsense. And they have about 20,000 products, and mm -hmm. they had about, uh, they were going out of business uh, within about three months, because nowadays it's just so cheap that if your washing machine breaks, it's actually cheaper to go buy a new one than it is to uh, the, you know, hire somebody to fix it. Uh, and then and fixing it yourself is out of the question, because you know, who, who knows how to do that? Mm -hmm. So uh, so they're on their way out of business uh, over this. So, so what they did, instead of um, 
uh, you know, just folding. They're like, well, let's take our last, you know, 10 or 15 grand. They bought a nice camera and set up a, you know, green screen in their, um, in their office. And for the next three months, they uh, shot videos. They took every single part that they sold and they shot a video on how to install that part. Wow. And they posted it on YouTube. They had mm -hmm. something around 20,000 uh, videos. To this day, I think they're, they're at something around, somewhere around 30 million hits, I think, uh, uh, 30 million views on, 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 on YouTube. Um, their business is up, I think, somewhere around two or 3,000 percent over the past couple of, uh, past sure. two or three years. Mm -hmm. um, because what would happen was people would start, would search, how do I install part XYZ? And guess what the name of their video was? How to install part XYZ. Uh, they didn't sell anybody the video. They didn't make you sign up to get the video. They just posted the video on the page where the product was to be bought. And so people would start searching, you know, like, geez, this part broke. Could I install it? I don't know. Let me see. How do you install this part? They would get to the video. There's the part. There's the video. All on the same page. And people started buying these parts. And they started using the videos uh, to install the parts. Um, this happened time and time again. And they, and they went from going out of business to having more money than they, than they know what to do with. 20,000 videos that they, that they just shot over the past over a couple months uh, just from their office with the you know, $2,000 camera. Um, this is about finding out who your ideal client is and giving them what they need. Uh, this is it's it's a much different level of connection. It's about it's about you know and not selling it to them but helping them, and then knowing that if I help them they're going to buy the part. Um, so let's talk about uh, how we find out what uh, you know what our clients need or what our ideal clients are you know who we're targeting what do they need and the first the first step is to listen. Um, this is like the hardest uh, thing for anybody who's a business owner because our, our entire uh, life is spent waiting for somebody to shut up long enough so we can, we can <laughs> throw our opinions down the throat, um, as opposed to just listening. And um, you know, like, like as, you could, as you heard with the story with, with the the um, uh, with with the superhero costume at the Inc. 500 thing. Um, I'm very, I, I'm very much uh, uh, in love with the concept of being uncomfortable, uh, get, getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and so, when you're listening to somebody, uh, there's a moment where they, they, you know, they throw up everything that's been bugging them for the past, you know, or all the surface stuff that they think is wrong with their site, or their company, or their, you know, whatever it is, whatever their problem is. They throw, and it's all this, uh, it's all this on the surface stuff. Oh, my business isn't growing because I just don't have the time and I don't have this and I don't have that, you know, and I don't have the know-how, whatever it is. Uh, in our case, it's always, uh, we just don't get the traffic. We just don't have enough traffic. That's why we need help. We don't have traffic. And, um, and that's good. And that's, uh, that's all that stuff on the surface that really means nothing. That's, that's the, you know, that's, that's the standard answer. Uh, and now, when they stop talking, instead of you jumping and going, we can fix that. We can get that for you. We got it. We did this all the time. You know, if you just stop and just wait. And, um, and it'll be uncomfortable for about 15 seconds, but you don't care because you're comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll feel the need to fill the space. And whatever they say at that point is gold. That's where they go. Because really, what's going on is we only have four months to live. Our, our, you know, our company is, is really struggling. And I don't know if we have three months to wait for the SEO to kick in. We really need to do something right now. And then now, like, all right, that's a different conversation. Now, how do we do this? And where do we go with this? And what do we do next? So. It's so important to listen because we never do. We we just as you know, we're always in that mode of, of uh, you know, let me let me get it out of my system first. And if you really sit down and listen to who your ideal clients are, who your existing clients are, just listen to them. You will learn more about your business than uh, you possibly could, uh, you know, just by sitting there working on it all the time. So. Um, one of the things that, that we have all, uh, our clients do once we get to a certain level of, um, you know, uh, get past the obvious stuff in the beginning um, is we'll have everybody write down questions. And you take notes because it's your next time. <laughs> uh, we'll have everybody write down questions. Anybody that has, a, uh, has any interaction with a client, uh, a prospect, um, a support person, somebody, anybody who has access with somebody in the outside world, we need them to have a yellow pad, use Evernote, something with them all the time. Because we need to start writing down those questions. And we need to write them down word for word. So, um, so uh, you, you know, we have a, a, company, a company that's like a telephone company. It's kind of like a, you know, they do like the voice over IP stuff and all that. And uh, what they'll do is uh, everybody on their staff has this you know, pen and paper. 
write down questions as people are asking them, they email them to us. This is gold because these are people, and first of all, they're not the first person to ask this question. Um, they're, look, they're asking you this question because they couldn't find the answer online. They first started looking, you know, like, like oh, you know, is this phone, you know, whatever. They asked a question, didn't get the answer that they needed, and now they're asking you. So if they're asking you, somebody else is asking also. And so if you can provide the answer to that question online, um, then uh, you're 10 steps ahead of everybody else because somebody's gonna search that question again. And it's not gonna be like this really competitive thing where you have, uh, look at that, we got 10,000 hits because somebody asked this one question. You're gonna get 30 hits, but they're gonna be 30 very high quality hits because the people that have that specific problem <laughs> are giving them that specific answer. And that is huge to, to, um, you know, to have somebody that uh, you've now helped with that answer um, you know, for that one, uh, for that one question. Now, let's say, and what we'll do is we'll take, like, let's, let's say we'll take that question and we'll make a blog post out of it. So if somebody asks, uh, you, you know, what do you do if your roof is leaking? So we have a blog post that that says, uh, that's, you know, what do we do if our roof is leaking? And now there's mm -hmm. 500 to 1,000 words of an answer, and not just like a true or false, or not just a uh, three-dollar article answer. We're talking the best possible answer. Um, what I always, uh, you know, the way I always see it is. Uh, how can we make our website the Wikipedia of our industry? How can your, the content on your website be so valuable that it has the best answer to the question that's being asked? And so now you have this one blog post that's gonna live out there forever. It's not gonna get penalized, not gonna have a, you know, like it's, it's just gonna live out there. And it'll maybe it'll get you 30 hits a month. Yay, 30 hits a month, but it'll 30 quality hits. Um, now, what if you did that twice a week for a year? So now you have uh, two posts, a, a week, for a year, you have 100 of those. 100 times 30 hits a month is much different. Now it's starting, to, it's starting to add up, starting to accumulate. What if you had 500 of them? We have clients that have five or 600 posts uh, that you can search anything in their industry, and they are within the top five. We have one client that has one of the most competitive terms. They own three spots of the top eight, or top 10, rather. I mean, three. We have three on the same page of, of, of this one question, very competitive uh, term. Um, we didn't do any keyword research. We didn't do any link building. We didn't do, um, you know, we didn't do any directories. We didn't do any any of the traditional stuff. Uh, what we did was we put this quality content out there over and over and over again. So, so yeah. Um, um, two questions. So you do it that way, but you also probably have Google doesn't pay attention to the meta tag, uh, you know, keywords and, and stuff. So, so that's 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 useless. Um, you know, what we do is we'll use the question as the title, so that'll show up as the title tag, and that's really the most valuable thing. Okay. So, so um, because that's a very valuable spot as far as meta tags and stuff go. Um, and the other and the other point of, of doing it this way is also not it's it's it's. Um, you know, uh, not as technical. Uh, we 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 put up posts that have ranked in hours uh, because uh, you know it's very you know it's very, and again it's very s it's specific to you know to we have a specific target for that one person, but it's um, uh, you know it'll it ranks very quickly. Are you using the um, autofill like on Loop? How do I do you look at the suggestions and on the yeah we'll we'll search around. We want to make sure that that there's something that that. You know that it hasn't been answered that way before. We'll look at you know, you know what what uh, if Google's putting in the autofill, then then it's clearly been asked before. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't put it. We don't put it like all like if, if it didn't autofill it, we wouldn't say oh forget it. Let's not write this one. Um, you know there's there's uh, there's always something out there, and and it's it's uh, you never know. I mean we we uh, wrote a post for a roofing client that uh, this is like the example of the day. Uh, the roofing client. Um, uh, how do you get the mold off your roof? And it was a step-by-step -step process of their of their remedy that they sell called roof washing. And um, and they lost their mind. They called me up <laughs> in the middle of the night, and you know we got to take this off. This is this is insane. We're we're giving everybody our secret. Like first of all, you're not giving anybody your secret. It's a bucket of water and a broom. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not let's let's not you know blow that up in there. But but um, who in their right mind would grab a bucket a bucket of soapy water and climb on the roof with a broom? Like you'd be insane. So so uh, it's that it's it's this idea of you know somebody has mold on the roof. They want to get it off. Is there an easy solution for this? Let me check. 
and then they see what it entails. I'm not climbing on my roof, I, you know. And for 250 bucks, I can hire these guys who just do the step by step. You know what? Uh, you know, because at the end of the article, it's like, you know, if you don't want to do this, you know, let us know. We'd be happy to help you with it. Um, their sales for, for their roof washing service, which is a secondary service, was in the six figures. You know, just from this one post, like we can attribute at least you know fifty to hundred thousand dollars for the sales just from this one article uh, because we just you know let's put it out there let's give them the secret sauce nobody's gonna do it anyway um, we do I, I put a lot of articles about uh, you know SEO and, and, and all this other kind of stuff because yeah and I'm here I'm not, they're not paying me to be here I'm talking about it and um, I'm not selling anybody anything I, you know it's, it's, it's not about any of that for me it's, it's just about getting the information out there I, I feel like that I'm constantly giving 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 Somehow um, uh, it'll, it'll come back. It'll you know, I'm giving enough information. Mm -hmm. Somebody will say, hey, you should talk to this guy. You know, and 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 uh, it's very funny because it happened last uh, uh, last night. We were we were at a TV meal thing, and, and uh, I was there, and and, so, and um, somebody just came up to me and was just like, you know what? Three people have asked me if I knew you, so and, and you were one of them, and so so um, I feel like I got to talk to you. What's you know, what's your story? And that's because, you know, always writing stuff, always putting stuff out there, and always, uh, you, you know, um, uh, getting out and speaking, uh, positioning myself in such a way uh, where I'm a valuable resource to the community. And with that comes, a, you know, um, you know that's, that's one of the things that attributed to our A500 thing. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We, we, you know, yeah, we got a lot of traffic from search, but we got a lot of traffic from search because we give so much value out there. We, and we go out and speak, and we help people, and we, you know, we put ourselves out there. And it turns into this stuff. It's not that we trick the system and then we get a lot of traffic that we converted. It wasn't anything like that. Yeah. So in your last example there about the uh, cleaning the roof, if you were trying, if somebody asked that question and they happen to be, let's say they live in Tampa, would you include the geotargeting aspect of the keywords like you didn't mean with Tampa Bay or roof engine? In order to just, if it's a local business, you wouldn't want somebody from Maine Right. Um, well, Google's gotten very smart in the sense, especially with Hummingbird. Hummingbird has made a lot of changes to to the way it sees stuff, and now it's no longer a um, keywords going in the right order. Like, and that's and that's where a lot of like this technique and this this approach comes from. Like now, it, now uh, <coughs> we can see that we're, where we're located. Whenever we um, set up our sites, you know, with, with um, uh, Google Webmaster Tools or something like, or you know, whatever, we make sure the address is on there. So we're clearly from Tampa, um, and it's a local company. <coughs> So, so in that sense, we will. Uh, um, it'll be it'll be very targeted. Um, we don't get that many calls, and we don't get that much traffic from from you know uh, places that we don't want. Um, I mean, we do. You're going to you're, you cast out big nets, and you're gonna you're gonna catch a couple of uh, uh, you know tires. Uh, so it's gonna happen. But um, it's not it's it's not this uh, it's not as extreme as you know when you do keyword research and we just want to get you know ranked for the term wedding band not realizing that there are wedding rings and then there are music groups. And now you have this whole weird mix of, of people that you don't know who you're talking about. So, so, um, so it's much more specific. You like that one? How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, um, so it's much more specific than that. That's it. Yeah. I, I've been writing, writing the blog, as you know. And I, when I write the blog, it's in the bottom it says, you know, type in your keyword, do all the stuff that is like a little SEO, green light, like yellow light. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. I noticed that, I mean, we had like 2,000 subscribers, et cetera, et cetera. But when I searched, this just happened to me last week, I was searching a particular question that I wanted to answer on Google. And the article that I wrote came up first. But it was a question that I wrote inside the blog that I did not put any keywords in. Right. But if I use my keywords, my article never came up. Right. So I'm, I'm wondering if like, all my efforts in this whole keyword totally stuff at fun. the bottom is a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I noticed the question I wrote in my article, I wrote three times and I answered it three different ways. Right. That came up first and there was no reference at all to that. Yeah, I, that's, that's everything we're talking about. That. Did you build a lot of links to it and all that kind of I stuff? I got like four or five links. No, but like, did you, did you, you know, hire somebody? I didn't do any link building, but right. people linked back to that question. Because it was a valuable article. And that's exactly and what I we're talking about. I wish I could write more of those. Yeah, I mean, I hire you, but you're a client. It's, <laughs> it, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's exactly what we're talking about. Where, where you're, you're, uh, um, you're adding value. You're putting a lot of content out there. And, and just so you know, just say, uh, uh, Michael's a very new, a new client of ours. We started you know, a couple weeks ago, 
Um, you, you, you were doing this before uh, you came, you know, you, you found us. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, several. And so, so um, that's like, like, that's the very, that's the human approach to this whole thing, where, where we're not trying to, uh, you know, sneak our way uh, through the door, where, but, but uh, you know, he's out there every day writing articles, but adding value, um, and because of that, didn't do any link building, but a handful of people uh, linked back to that article. The value of having five human beings with uh, well-known blogs, or even you know, not so well-known blogs, leaving comments, uh, writing a blog about your uh, article is worth uh, a thousand times <coughs> the automated, crappy, you know, uh, um, directories and like, like the other stuff that that's that's uh, and not all directories are bad, um, you know, but, but like those those automated link building, uh, you know, type techniques where you can build a thousand links in a month, two thousand links in a month, five thousand links in a month. Um, those are worthless compared to those five, those ten that are done from, from a more human perspective. We got, okay, <coughs> we got to do it. See that? All right, paying attention. Um, so so uh, then, then the next thing, uh, uh, you know, we want to survey our best clients in order to really figure out what they need. <coughs> and, and by survey our best clients, um, uh, I'm not talking about like survey monkey. Survey monkeys are, are, um, are a waste of time. Nobody either, either people don't fill them out or they don't fill them out honestly. I'm talking about survey your clients from uh, you know a perspective of um, where you're going above and beyond. Take your client out to lunch. Uh, do some you know we, we've had we've had clients that that um, were halfway across the country and we just <coughs> cannot reach them. So what we've done is is um, is uh, you know invited them for a cup of coffee. Uh, you know we'll have a, you know let's do coffee tomorrow at one o'clock. You know like we're a thousand miles away. Like don't worry about it. one o'clock. You know meet for coffee and then uh, okay sure fine. And so we'll hire a runner, uh, you know, in their town to go pick up Starbucks, drop it off mm. at their house. We'll pick, or drop it off at their office. We'll we'll get Starbucks and we'll be sitting in front of Skype uh, and we'll have I coffee. Know, it's like forty or fifty bucks, and it is like the best forty or fifty bucks that you'll ever spend. Not because you're trying to, you know, weasel something out of your client, but because you're trying to connect with them. And you know, you can do something like that that goes above and beyond. They will tell you all the things that you need to know. They will give you information. Uh, that you really need to know about, you know, what their needs are, what they, and now you can help them better, and you can have, find more people like them easier by just by, you know, you know, getting that information where, where, you know, when you're just the vendor, you know, th there's this feeling of, you know, keeping the cards close to my chest. I can't, you know, I, I can't tell you this. I want to, you know, I got to hold some, withhold some information. I don't get too close. It's too early in the relationship, as opposed to if. Um, you know, you can uh, you can really connect. You can you know you, uh, where I'm looking out for your best interest uh, on a much higher level. It's, this isn't about hey look I can squeeze another hundred bucks out of you. It's about look this needs to get done. Let's just fix it. You know whatever it takes. Let's just fix it. Yeah. I, I really love what you're saying because um, a lot, I have a lot of uh, it brings up a lot of eggs for me. Okay. Because a lot of my <coughs> way of doing business in some cases is adversarial. <coughs> You know, uh, I'm instead of trying to be a friend, I'm, it's sort of this cat and mouse game. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I wonder if you can speak about that, but this seems to be speaking about it. But how, on my part, to break my, to break my thought pattern, so I can't think more like this. Um, it's just a matter of uh, you know, like like uh, just just forcing yourself to do things a little differently. Right? Like if you're if you're used to doing it one way, I would try it, you know one or two clients, fail miserably at it a couple of times, and then and then but then see what what you what your reaction is. So uh, so just moving moving on because I know we, we're short on time and I want to make sure I can I can hang around for questions afterwards if anybody has any. I'd be happy to. Um, the the uh, the next part is to become their expert, and and I'm, I'm very clear. And saying become their expert. I love the picture. How to be an expert in ten easy lessons. Um, because I, I firmly don't believe that that uh, there are such things as experts and gurus and rock stars and divas and all this other nonsense that people kind of portray themselves as online. Uh, because uh, as an expert, um, what you're telling yourself and telling everybody else that you know everything, and um, and you don't. You don't know everything, and and uh, I don't care who you are, where you are in your with, in your, uh, you know, your position in your in your um, uh, professional life, you don't have all the answers. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't get them, and it doesn't mean that there are other people that you are smarter at, better at, uh, that you can be their expert. So, so I know more about this than you, so I'm your expert. But there, are, I don't know everything, and there's a million people uh, uh, above me that know more, that are my experts, and then they have their experts. So, so. Um, 
becoming their expert is about uh, you know uh, you know being able to uh, give this valuable information to them. So so now that we have you know we figured out who our ideal clients are, we know what they need, we know what they want. Now we have to give it to them. And so um, we you know we never want to uh, do a quick answer, true false, uh, you know 200 word blog post, whatever it is. You want to find the best answer that you can. You want to come up with the best answer you can. And you can research it if you don't know the answer. Uh, you can um, uh, you can you know create it. Whatever it takes. You can do a video. You can do whatever it is. You want to come up with the best possible answer to that question. And again, think of yourself as the Wikipedia of your industry. <coughs> so the biggest resource of answers in your industry, like I said, be the Wikipedia. And then uh, give everything away for free. Um, this is the part that you know again most people have the hardest time with because. Um, and by free, I'm not saying that um, you have to be on my newsletter in order to get the free stuff, you know, in order, order to get the, the, the answer. You don't have to sign up, you don't have to pay, you don't have to do anything. Well, I'm just going to give it to you. Um, this way, it's not behind some in some wall that says, you know, that we're, we're that we have a little bit of this going on. Like I'll give you this, but you know, I need this first. Come on. You know, we don't want that. We want to be able to just constantly give and just give answers to. There are people that are not going to hire you. Um, you know, it's it. You know, whenever I do these talks, you know, like I don't, like, and, and no way do I, I sell every, anything uh, at mm -hmm. these things. But I never walk in the room and thinking like, all right, there's you know, 60 people here. I bet I can close every single one of them, or I bet I can close one of them or two of them. Like I never think that way. I'm just, you know, it's always a surprise to me when somebody, you know, hey, I was wondering if we could talk. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so uh, because it's never about that. It's always about um, you know just giving the answers away and giving that, giving that valuable content. Here's how we want to do it. We want to do it through blogs. We want to do it through uh, through white papers. You want to do it through articles. And all of this is going to live on your site. So all this content that you're going to write is live on your site. And it's a lot of work. Uh, but if you wrote, let's say, if you spent uh, you know an hour, two hours a week uh, writing something. Um, you would be light years ahead of everybody else. Uh, you would be light years ahead of, ahead of your competition. Now, if you think in terms of your your uh, competitor, uh, your competitor may have a five-page website that's a sales website, ten-page website, selling a bunch of stuff. Uh, how do you think they would compete against your site, which has a hundred pages of valuable blog posts, of white papers, of articles? Who do you think is the better industry expert? And if you were competing for uh, for the job for somebody. You know, if I was looking for a roofer, uh, do you think I would hire the guy that, that had five pages of sales content, or the guy that had 100 pages of um, you know answers to all my questions? You know, before we even sat down, this guy, you know, he wrote a book, he did this, he got, he's got all this stuff. He's positioned himself as this extreme expert. Um, most people are going to go for for somebody that's positioned themselves that way. So you're going to write books, you're going to write blogs, you're going to write uh, you just write a lot of content, video content, uh, images, all this kind of stuff is going to position you set yourself in that way. And the beautiful thing about it is, um, is where Google comes into this. And where Google comes in is the Google's job is to come up with the best possible answer to the question being searched. If they don't come up with the best possible answer to the question being searched, they become Yahoo. Because that's what Yahoo's problem was. <laughs> Yahoo's, you know, Yahoo, had the, Yahoo cornered the market in, 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 uh, in search when, when they first came out and for, for years. And uh, Google was constantly improving while Yahoo was just you know, resting on the laurels. They, were, they, they didn't realize that people were trying to trick the system and come up with a better way and, you know, to, to get on the top. And so what ended up happening was uh, Yahoo lost market share to, where, to the point where they barely even exist. I mean, they're, they, they're, even Bing is doing uh, better than that. Um, they're, they're, uh, you know, they have little to no impact on the internet anymore. Um, and so that's why Google is constantly uh, changing their algorithm. Uh, a lot of people, business owners, SEO companies, always think that Google's out to get us. They're constantly changing their algorithms because they're, they're out to get us. And they're not. They're just trying to, you know, constantly trying to pay. Like, Google does not work for you. Mm -hmm. Google works for the person that's, be, that's searching. And so they're just constantly looking for the better answer. When they start to see people tricking the system, they plug the hole in the book. And so now you have to find a different way. But the method we're talking about doesn't do any of that. We're creating the valuable content that Google wants. We're not worry about cramming keywords and link building. We're, our stuff is so valuable, people are sharing it. We're doing our own link building uh, in that way. Um, we have, uh, you know, we have 
the ability to uh, to reach out and, and uh, connect with people on a more human level to where uh, we're not selling them. It's not about this this idea of I just need to get number one on Google. Now we're on number one on Google, and now we've we've enticed somebody to click on that link. We've given them the information they need. We've positioned ourselves as an expert. We've connected with them because we know who they are and what their needs are. And now when they're ready to hire somebody, they're gonna they're gonna at least give us a shot. We may blow it when when they call, but but at least we have a shot at it. And you know, and so so this is where the whole process works, and you know, and, and it's not about um, this this sterilized uh, you know link building, keyword research, and all this other kind of stuff. This is where Google is going. You can see it in everything that they do. Hummingbird made it more and more human. Their their uh, the results are becoming more and more human. And so we can start, we can continue to, you know to, to learn from the past, or if we move forward and kind of see where they're going, we'll be in much better shape. The search as we know is going to be completely different over the next two years. We start thinking about mobile. We start thinking about Siri and what Siri's role mm -hmm. plays in this whole thing, where we have um, local search and voice search. Um, all these things are making it more and more human. And so, if we can play along, if we can learn from that, and we can um, uh, create that connection, we're going to be light years ahead of, uh, of who our clients are, uh, who our competitors are. So, so I know, uh, I know we had to pack up. I, I, did you want to say something? I, I, I can hang around for questions.